When you view an Infotex webinar or movie, you do so with four caveats. First, you are agreeing to the terms posted at the webpage listed on this slide. Second, our lawyers want you to know that what Infotex presents is often time dated or about new trends, regulations, or guidance, and therefore we cannot provide this material with any warranty whatsoever. Thirdly, material provided with Infotex webinars and movies is copyrighted. You keep the copyright to material customized to your organization, but Infotex reserves the right to use the material in other engagements and boilerplates. See our Transfer of Copyright Agreement at the webpage listed in the slide. Finally, those who view our webinars or movies may be added to an email mailing list. If you do not wish to receive notice of additional educational opportunities, please accept our apologies and please opt out at the webpage shown on the slide. Hello, and thanks for joining us today for Endpoint Detection and Response and you, taking antivirus and anti-malware to the next level. I will have to admit I'm not the uh, king of webinar titles yet, uh, so our options were such as uh, Endpoint Detection Response 101 or getting started with Endpoint Detection Response. Uh, so let's dive on in. Uh, my name is Michael Harkey. I'm the Executive Vice President here at Infotex. Uh, over the years, you may have heard uh, me as a moderator for some of these webinars, uh, but today I'd like to dig a little bit deeper on how important a good EDR is uh, to your overall security posture. So uh, when I first gave this presentation, we were in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. And so um, <laughs> I added uh, some likes and dislikes about myself. Um, likes were talking cybersecurity, risk, and long walks on the beach. And my dislikes were water. <laughs> um, but yeah, a little bit about myself. I've been with Infotex for about 15 years now. Um, I uh, was senior programmer of our uh, managed security information event management system, our managed SIEM, um, and uh, very, very involved in uh, next-gen antivirus and EDR integration into that SIEM. So, Today, we're going to be covering these uh, four main topics. Uh, what is endpoint detection and response, EDR? Uh, what are the benefits and costs? Uh, why will we need an EDR? And SIEM integration and monitoring. But first, let's start off by defining next-gen antivirus solutions. What are they? Next-gen antivirus takes traditional antivirus software to a new advanced level of endpoint security protection. It goes beyond known file-based malware signatures and heuristics because of a system-centric cloud-based approach. It uses predictive analytics driven by machine learning and artificial intelligence and combines threat intelligence to detect and prevent malware and fileless non-malware attacks identify malicious behavior and tactics, techniques and procedures, collect and analyze comprehensive endpoint data to determine root causes, and responds to new and emerging threats that previously go undetected by traditional and conventional antivirus solutions. Today's attackers know exactly where to find gaps and weaknesses in an organization's network perimeter security and they penetrate these in ways that easily bypass traditional antivirus software. These attackers use highly developed tools to target vulnerabilities that leverage PowerShell scripting language, RAM, memory-based attack, remote logins, micro-based attacks. Modern threats that do not introduce new files to the system often go undetected because traditional antivirus focuses on signature file or definition based threats. And that's where endpoint detection is different. What is endpoint detection and response, EDR? So EDR is an endpoint security solution that continuously monitors and 
user devices to detect and respond to cyber threats like ransomware and malware. ADR records and stores endpoint system level behaviors and uses various data analytic techniques to detect suspicious system behavior. It provides contextual information, blocks malicious activity, and provides remediation suggestions to restore effective systems. It can improve compliance, reduce risk, and enhance a uh, company's security posture, and solutions often use artificial intelligence, machine learning, and behavioral analysis to detect suspicious behavior. Uh, EDR can also defend against signature list attacks that may go unnoticed by conventional, traditional solutions like antivirus. ADR relies uh, partly on artificial intelligence uh, to uh, continuously feed its detection engine, also machine learning uh, to get an idea of uh, what is expected behavior versus what's unexpected behavior, and also behavior analysis. Um, taking that those type of uh, data points uh, that it uses, uses in that machine learning, uh, again, to uh, determine if something's of normal behavior or abnormal behavior. Uh, for example, if a user that only touches specific files, you know, 10 specific, specific files a day is now touching thousands of files a day, then obviously that is uh, something that a good EDR is going to alert you to. So talking a little bit more about these benefits. Uh, so as I mentioned, behavior-based detection, machine learning, and artificial intelligence are big pieces of the EDR puzzle. Um, that continuous feed of new uh, uh, vulnerabilities and exploits, as well as its ability to look for um, behavior that's not expected. But above and beyond that, uh, cloud-based management uh, the ability to access your and manage your endpoints from the cloud, uh, including remediation as well. We'll get into a little bit more of that later. Uh, also, host-based intrusion detection and firewall. So the ability to actually, it acts as a layer on top of the firewall you already have on the endpoint. Uh, and then, of course, you have your uh, firewalls uh, uh, within your network uh, on your edge and uh, protecting you there as well. Uh, but EDR also offers another software layer uh, firewall on top of that. That helps prevent lateral movement and and being able to uh, send out even internal IP addresses um, for uh, blocking. Um, as, as we know, and blocking internal IP addresses is very difficult. And so that's one of the ways that uh, EDR is able to manage lateral movement concern. And last but not least, better auditing. Uh, better integration with seams and socks, third party or internal. Um, and, you know, again, better auditing of knowing what exactly is happening on that system at all times. Now, also, uh, important for the highly regulated spaces is the improved uh, compliance, uh, reduced risk, and the enhancing of the security posture uh, but by providing continuous monitoring of endpoints and the network. Companies that leverage EDR can quickly detect and respond to threats in real time, reducing the potential impact of an attack. I mentioned it earlier, I, I promise we get to it. Um, so segregated response uh, is another area where that cloud layer really comes into play. It allows you to isolate endpoints without having to elevate permissions, uh, communicates only with the service via the cloud, uh, prevents the lateral movement, and investigation can continue uh, via that cloud service. Uh, so that allows us, uh, allows us to take the uh, affected endpoint off the network uh, at three o'clock in the morning and be able to investigate that network 
uh, the, that endpoint and um, even sometimes remediate that endpoint, but at least take it off the network so it can't spread uh, laterally and infect other systems and, and devices on your network. Uh, so that's a very important piece uh, to the security layer of EDR is that segregated response uh, that, you know, what can uh, somebody do at three o'clock in the morning? Uh, what can a watcher like Infotex do at three o'clock in the morning to ensure that, uh, you know, something's not going to spread uh, because uh, we're not able to reach somebody um, at the institution we're working with? Next, I'd like to talk about some of the leaders in the EDR space. Um, everybody's kind of getting into the EDR game. Uh, traditional antivirus companies, uh, some much further along than others. Uh, but here are some uh, some leaders. Of course, uh, we suggest you go out and kind of do your own research, ask your own experts. There's a lot of information out there, obviously. Uh, but here are some of the leaders that we've run into, we've worked with, uh, Sindel One, uh, Carbon Black, uh, CrowdStrike, Sophos, uh, Trend Micro, uh, Silence, um, which I learned putting this presentation together originally uh, was a BlackBerry company. Um, so that was a, a shock and surprise to me. Um, but it's not a shock or surprise to see how many um, companies are getting into the, the ADR space. Uh, let's talk about some about cost. Uh, the cost associated with endpoint detection and response solution can vary depending on several factors, such as the number of endpoints being protected, the level of protection uh, required, and the obviously the vendor selected. Uh, some in ADR solutions uh, are custom priced, and others offer pricing plans based on the number of endpoints uh, being protected. Uh, so the cost does vary per platform, obviously. Uh, most do have uh, per endpoint licensing, um, uh, but the real difference and something to kind of pay attention to is uh, the differences in flavors, um, even of the same platform. Um, so, for example, managed versus unmanaged. Uh, you manage being where, you know, it's being watched by your MSP, um, MSSP, or your internal SOC 24 by 7 by 365. Obviously, unmanaged being a solution that uh, you have access to and maybe you manage uh, or maybe your MSP uh, manages, uh, but they're not watching and monitoring 24 by 7 by 365. Um, and then also the big difference is uh, auto retention, uh, the difference in, uh, you know, uh, retaining the, the audit data for, you know, say 30 days uh, or seven days uh, versus much longer uh, that can kind of drive the, the cost up as well. However, there are some cost savings uh, to be had. Uh, you know, some intangibles are the reduced risk and improved compliance. Uh, but some intangibles uh, or some tangibles are the consolidation, uh, being able to consolidate several different types of applications, uh, doing the same thing. For example, endpoint monitoring software um, and antivirus. Uh, that's example of just an uh, example of two uh, you know, pieces of software that can be uh, consolidated on the endpoint there, um, and with the added bene benefit of it being next-gen antivirus uh, with that cloud piece uh, in the AI and machine learning behavioral analysis, uh, but going above and beyond just, uh, you know, uh, uh, signature uh, detection, for example. And then the reduced uh, uh, attack surface and complexity uh, that kind of goes back to the consolidation. Uh, you know, you could argue this as a pro and a con. Uh, you know, you're reducing your attack surface, so you have less applications on the endpoint uh, that could be vulnerable, that could, you know, have a zero day, uh, that could be problematic. However, you are kind of putting 
more eggs in one basket. Uh, so if that ADR platform, uh, you know, gets uh, targeted, then it could have, you know, more of an impact than you know, if you have four different applications that were, you know, kind of doing each a small piece of what the EDR application would be doing for you today. And that kind of goes into my next slide is that, you know, it's not bulletproof. Um, you know, layers are important. This is just one layer. Uh, although uh, we find it to be a, a very important um, and uh, effective layer, it is, it is just one layer. Uh, you uh, obviously have your edge protection with your firewalls and, uh, you know, IDS, IPS, uh, event log management, uh, you know, all fading into a seam, hopefully, um, but also having that EDR protection and data uh, is adding to your ability uh, to move quickly on those possible threats. Uh, of course, mind those gaps. Uh, so if you only have EDR on uh, endpoint detection uh, software on a few of your endpoints, uh, obviously you have a lot of gaps. Um, and the idea is also to have them obviously on servers, endpoints, uh, everything that you can have them on um, so that you, 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 know, you have all that information. You can see the lateral movement. Uh, you know uh, it lowers your risk knowing that the, those devices are all uh, protected. Next gen antivirus and EDR is no less of a target. Uh, you know, as uh, these solutions are replacing traditional antivirus and anti malware solutions, uh, they are, you know, becoming more and more of a target. And, um, you know, that's something that uh, we always have to be uh, cognizant of um, and concerned about. And our MSOC is seeing this in the wild. Uh, you know, we are seeing that, you know, EDR systems are uh, being targeted. Um, uh, you know, it's no different, again, from the traditional and conventional antivirus uh, products out there. And, um, uh, you know, it's not bulletproof. It's not a, a silver, silver bullet, uh, but it's a... Uh, a huge step in the right direction uh, for detection, monitoring, uh, control, compliance, uh, and that, and your overall security posture. I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, deployment and, uh, before I go into the why, uh, which maybe the why should be before all this, uh, but the right why kind of reinforces the rest. Uh, so what we like to do when we're working with an EDR uh, you know, and a lot like just a traditional antivirus as well uh, before or any application that you're going to deploy to all your endpoints. Obviously, you want to uh, know that it's not going to take your systems down. It's not going to be a productivity issue and cause issues across your network and your infrastructure. Uh, so what we recommend doing is starting with a pilot group. Uh, with just the detection policy in place. Um, so that way you're seeing all that data, all that activity, uh, you know, everything that it, it's uh, trying looking at, uh, but it's not necessarily stopping anything yet. Uh, that allows you to monitor for exceptions uh, for policies and services, processes, uh, scripts, and scheduled tasks, and see which of those are accepted, allowed exceptions uh, that are just normal behavior on your network. And you want to do that, again, to make that transition uh, to your ADR uh, seamless uh, so that your users aren't getting, uh, not being able to do their job by, you know, uh, a legitimate process being blocked uh, because your ADR uh, thinks that it's not legitimate. Now, some ADRs are a lot noisier than others, uh, so, but this is an important step for all for any and all EDR platforms uh, to ensure you have kind of a tuned, quieter system uh, before you roll it out uh, to everybody. So yeah, allow those exceptions and then turn on protect mode uh, for that pilot group and watch for that negative behavior. Did you catch all the exceptions? Are all the functions 
working properly on the in that pilot group. Uh, I would recommend having servers in that pilot group, endpoints in that pilot group, so you get an idea of how it's going to affect all your systems, not just one or the other as well. And then uh, once you're happy with that, once you're sure that it's not impacting your business too much, you'll want to you know, create other groups and, and roll that out, out globally with management tools like a CEM or uh, whatever uh, endpoint management tools you, you may be using, uh, GPO, uh, rollout, whatever it may be. And to the why. Beyond and above all the reasons we've already uh, talked about, you know, why should you go with an EDR over traditional antivirus? Uh, and first and foremost, uh, we say go where the risk is. You know, who is the weakest link in computer security? <laughs> we have a poster that says uh, you. Not necessarily you, obviously, but the end user, uh, our users, our people, um, you know, they are the weakest link. Uh, they are being targeted, uh, actively being targeted. Um, that risk has moved to the endpoint. Our users are being attacked constantly. Our next why is advanced persistent threats. So these are scary. They're scary for everybody involved uh, because they're getting more sophisticated. They're getting on our networks and they're camping out and they're hanging out for months at a time, uh, doing very minimal recon, making it very uh, much harder to spot over just regular activity. They're not blasting. They're not uh, getting in and trying to do a ton and getting out. They're placing a foothold and hanging out for a very long time. And what we've learned is that one of the reasons why that is is because they've uh, kind of piecemealed the hacking operation. And someone will get a foothold into your network and then sell that foothold to another hacker organization. Um, that's just what they, you know, that's just one reason that that's happening. Uh, another reason, obviously, is to keep from being detected. You know, if you're not transfer, if you're not getting in and transferring, you know, gigs of files out, you know, exfilling gigs of files, then it's harder to spot you. Um, you know, if you're not reconning, enumerating users constantly, um, and, you know, just trying to find the next foot, uh, the, the next hole, the next lateral movement, uh, it's a lot harder to spot. Uh, so EDR helps with that because it's looking for anything abnormal. It's really tracking every single thing that happens on the endpoint and running it against the machine learning, the artificial intelligence, the behavioral uh, analysis, behavioral user analysis, and looking for anything and everything that looks different on that endpoint. And last but not least, ideally, that should bring us to quicker response. You know, when we have that alert, more than the traditional antivirus or anti-malware, you know, it's it's alerting a 24 by 7 uh, monitored solution that something may be happening and, the, and your MSP, MSSP can jump in and start looking at that uh, system, taking that system offline and doing that uh, isolated uh, response um, to try to dig, to uh, try to mitigate, investigate, is there lateral movement? And really uh, responding quicker to those threats uh, instead of it being a reactive, uh, hey, we have a quarantine file, what are we going to do about it? Uh, will I scan that system now? Uh, it's more of a, a proactive approach. Uh, most EDRs don't even have a uh, scanning. Uh, well, they, a lot of them have a scan on demand, but you don't really need to scan an endpoint because that endpoint is continuously monitored. And so changes of that endpoint are continuously monitored and being fed to your seam, your SOC, um, your dashboard, if it's just you, email alerts, whatever it may be. So you can quickly respond to whatever that threat may be. 
Last but certainly not least uh, is the Cypher Kill Chain, as you can see on my screen here. First and foremost, I'd like to give credit to Lockheed Martin, who came up with this. Uh, but as we can see here, uh, reconnaissance being the first step, obviously EDR is not going to help you there per se. Weaponizing, uh, coupling exploit with a backdoor and a deliverable payload. That's where EDR really kick, starts to kick in. Um, delivery, delivering weaponized bundle to the victim via email, web, USB, etc. Uh, exploitation, uh, exploiting a vulnerability to execute code on a victim system. Installation, installing malware on the asset. Command and control, uh, command channel for remote manipulation. And then uh, last but not least, actions on objectives uh, with hands-on keyboard access and truers accomplish their original goals. So as you can see here, EDR is very important in the cyber kill chain. Uh, it really uh, comes in very early. Um, and if you can break that kill chain in the beginning, then the chance for uh, misuse, the chance for exploitation, obviously is uh, greatly reduced. So I like to show the cyber kill chain as kind of the ultimate why. And that brings me to our last uh, section for our webinar today, and that is integrating and monitoring. So really it's about, ultimately it's about adding layers, right? Uh, so monitoring that EDR uh, by sending that data to your SIEM or your SOC or managed SOC, um, retaining that data, uh, the audit retention of the uh, endpoint data, you know, everything that's happened on those endpoints. And even a patching level of those endpoints as well. Uh, isolated incident response, as we talked about, segregated response, being able to uh, take that system off the network, uh, uh, potentially, you know, affected system off the network and uh, investigate it and possibly even remediate it you know, before it can spread and cause more damage. And this might be coming from uh, somebody that's uh, developed the seam, but, you know, the more intelligence, the better. The more data points, the better. The more that you can pivot on, the more, you know, uh, that you can correlate, uh, the better picture uh, that you can paint of your overall threats uh, and your overall security posture. And really, it gives you the ability to answer some of those questions that are being asked of you. So, I hope that was informative. Um, and I uh, let me know if you'd like to uh, have me do kind of a deep dive and go even deeper on EDR and, um, you know, what it does and what it could do for you. Uh, hey, I finally got to the title. <laughs> Um, but yeah, thanks. Thank you everybody for joining us today. Really appreciate it. Um, really look forward to seeing you get seeing everyone next time and, uh, make it a great day.